statistics. We're going to discuss reliability versus validity. So reliability, um, it's going to be from zero, not reliable, to one, perfectly reliable. Um, so reliability is you get the, you repeat the experiment and you get the same results. It does not have to be valid, but you're getting the same results. Um, so for example, I have a scale and it says every time I get on the scale, it says 200 pounds. I get on the scale, it says 200 pounds. My cat gets on the scale, it says 200 pounds. My dog gets on there, it says 200 pounds. It's really reliable. It's showing that 200 pounds every time, right? Um, so... Uh, validity, however, uh, measures what must be, re it's measures, they must be reliable to be valid. So our scale was reliable, but it wasn't very valid, right? We know that my cat doesn't weigh 200 pounds. Um, so if we calibrated the scale and we put the 25 pound dumbbell on there and we weighed that 25 pound dumbbell over and over and over again and it came up with 25 pounds, it is reliable, but it's also accurate or valid because it actually is 25 pounds. Um, so that's kind of how I remember the difference between validity and reliability. Internal, reli internal validity is going to be what is being studied is causing the effects. Um, so say we're studying that um, my cat, she smells catnip and she goes crazy. Um, so we are studying catnip making my cat go crazy. Well, maybe my cat just goes crazy for no reason. Yes, she does at four in the morning. Um, that would not be very internally reliable. Um, maybe she goes crazy because the dog chases her. Maybe there's other things that make her go crazy. And in my experiment, she's going crazy from not only the catnip, but the dog, the 4 a.m. wake up, um, all that stuff. So that's internal validity. You want to make sure that there's not these other factors causing the, you know, the cat to go crazy. You want to make sure she's only exposed, the dog's not around her. She's only exposed to the catnip. Um, so hopefully that helps you with the differences between those. Standard deviation. So that's going to be the dispersion about the mean. Um, I have some really great notes on this one. And basically standard deviation. So I like to think about, here they are. Um, info is deviating away from the significantly, um, from the significance diversion or dispersion about the average. So further away is less significant. I like to think a deviant child, okay? <laughs> so our standard deviation, if you have one standard deviation away, um, then it's gonna be, it's at 68% within one standard deviation, so both sides. Um, if you are asking about just one side, then it's gonna be that 34%. Um, if you're looking at two standard deviations, it's going to be 95% of all of our research. Um, so anyway, so the dispersion about the mean value of the distribution. Um, that's what I have on standard deviation. Oh, excuse me. All right. Um, I kind of skipped over mean, median, and mode, but I will say... Uh, mean, we should probably all be able to remember that one, average, median, I like to think of the median of the roads, you have the median of the road that has maybe trees in it, so when you have your numbers all lined up from least to greatest, the middle number, or the average of the two middle numbers, mode has an O in it, so I think most often, often, so it's the number that's repeating the most, um, and then our variables, we have independent variable versus dependent. Um, so dependent variables are the outcomes. Independent are what you're manipulating. So if you have a custard, your custard in product, that is your dependent variable. Your independent variables might be like your temperature, your time, um, those kind of things. You can change the temperature and time of your oven, right? Um, so that's impacting your custard, the dependent variable. Nominal um, variables. They fit into a category like gender, race, ethnicity, um, rank or ordinal. 
Um, so, hey, tell me if the custard from one to five tastes five the best, one the least gross or whatever. The one the gross, one is gross, five is best. So that's your ordinal or your rank. Um, all right, I think that's all I've got on there. Um, Variants. So, want to know how do you measure or evaluate validity? It's called ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. Um, ask whether the difference between two samples is reliable and it can be repeated. Used when several products compete against one another. Um, answers are more than one significant difference anywhere among the samples. So, just know ANOVA is used to evaluate validity. All right, we talked about standard deviations. Um, I did a video on R values and P values. And then some different definitions to know. All right, um, double blind studies that removes the bi bias for research. Uh, mortality versus morbidity. Um, so mortality, I think of the video game Mortal Kombat. I don't know if you guys know that one, but my stepbrother used to play it all the time. So mortal. Uh, mortal, uh, I also think it has an L in it, like kill. I also think mortal versus immortal. So when you're thinking about like Greek mythology, gods um, are immortal. They live forever versus humans are mortal. We die. So rate of death. That's how I remember mortality versus morbidity. Um, morbidity also has a D in it. So I think of disease. All right. Inferential statistics, so basically, um, so techniques that allow conclusions to extend beyond the immediate set of data, what is the probability that results can be applied to a larger group? What can you infer from your results of your study? So inferential statistics like, I found this in my study and it can be inferred or implied that this can also be found in the real world. So it's basically like, in your study, how are you applying? Can that go beyond just your study? Like, if you take it out of the Petri disk, is it going to work in real life? That's how I think of inferential statistics. So techniques that can allow conclusions to extend beyond the media data set. Um, pilot study. So you are doing the same exact study. Every single step is included, but it's a lot smaller. So you have a pilot study of maybe you want to do something for the entire United States, but you do a pilot study within your own city. So a smaller group than the entire United States, right? Um, focus group. So we're obtaining information about a target group, a small group who care about the same beliefs, opinions, and, opinion, and problems. Um, and then we have the chi-square test and the t-test. Um, chi-square it tests whether there's a real difference between two categories. So we're comparing um, more than two categories. Our t-test is between the means of the different two different populations. So test the null against alternative hypothesis. Um, and then we have, oh, that's pretty much it there. Um, that is where I will stop for research. Thanks guys. Um, I will see you guys next Wednesday after thanks, or sorry, after Christmas. One o'clock, we are going to go through the next section, which is going to be normal nutrition and probably going to be talking about metabolism and trying to get into some of the vitamins next week. So I will see you guys then and take a look at some of uh, your next section before we meet so we can talk about it. Thanks, y'all.